Welcome, welcome to Welcome to Crypto. I'm your host, Carlos, and today I want to let you know that Bitcoin has been hijacked by the Bitcoin developers. It didn't happen recently, and it didn't happen suddenly, but over a period of years, the direction of the Bitcoin project has been completely changed. Now, I've been around Bitcoin for a long time, so I... Hey, you all. Welcome back to the channel. And what I want to do today is um, a very interesting video um, I came in contact with. Um, and I wanted to respond to some of the things that were said in the video um, and um, see what we see what we get you know out of this uh, Bitcoin the public service announcement Bitcoin has been hijacked let's see if uh, this information is uh, something that is valid with what's happening in Bitcoin and uh, we're gonna just go through the video and see what we come up uh, with actually seen this happen firsthand but for a lot of you guys who joined more recently it's very difficult to get the truth of where bitcoin was going in the distant past but one great resource for that is the very old bitcoin forums at bitcointalk.org because the creator of bitcoin satoshi nakamoto actually posted his thoughts on the development of bitcoin as he was building it and one of those threads is particularly interesting the opening post on the thread says what would happen if we just spam the network with millions of transactions and i love how he just wrote bc instead of btc because they weren't even using btc to represent bitcoin at that time okay that's kind of interesting so what he's um what he's doing here is he's going back to some of satoshi's uh older writings on um community threads and uh, this was something i didn't know because i wasn't around in 2010 um that uh bitcoin instead of using the btc it wasn't it wasn't using Bitcoin, the BTC, it was just using BC, uh, kind of like Bitcoin Cash. <laughs> so that's kind of interesting. Uh, and we will leave a full link to the video in the description uh, so you can watch it without interruption and, and come to your own conclusion. But we're just going to go through the video and uh, see what uh, what he what he says here. So I've put a link to this thread below the video because I think it's so good to look through. There's a couple of pages of posts of people's thoughts about spam. And Satoshi posted several times here. One of his posts is particularly interesting. He said it would be nice to keep the block.data files small as long as we can. Those are the blockchain files, basically the size of the blockchain. But then he says the eventual solution will be to not care how big it gets. What? don't care how big the blockchain gets that sounds crazy how would you store an arbitrarily large blockchain on your hard drive i mean it does have to be limited somehow right well that kind of reveals the attitude that satoshi had about the maximum block size which has been an issue for years and it's the cause of the high fees on the bitcoin network but another of satoshi's posts really reveals what he's thinking about this he's talking about microtransactions which is sending just a few cents of bitcoin to another person and today that's simply not possible on the bitcoin blockchain because of the high fees but here's what satoshi Satoshi wrote about it. He said, I forgot to add the good part about micropayments. While I don't think Bitcoin is practical for smaller micropayments right now, it will eventually be as storage and bandwidth costs continue to fall. If Bitcoin catches on on a big scale, P.S. it did, it may already be the case by that time. Another way they can become more practical is if I implement client-only mode and the number of network nodes consolidates into a smaller number of professional server farms. Client-only mode, by the way, was added so everyone doesn't have to have a copy of the entire blockchain. Satoshi continues, whatever size micropayments you need will eventually be practical. I think in 5 or 10 years, the bandwidth and storage will seem trivial. Well, it's been about 10 years since Satoshi wrote that, and although bandwidth and storage aren't entirely trivial yet, we have seen a lot of improvement in that space. But unfortunately, the Bitcoin developers blocked the growth of Bitcoin by allowing the transaction load to hit a hard-coded limit in the protocol. And that's why I think that Bitcoin Cash, which moved... All right, let me stop here. So many of y'all were, were able to pick up on that, and it had to do with the issue of uh, Bitcoin. Uh, and micropayments for the most part and not being concerned about the um, increase in the block size but of but of course what's been the big tobacco and what created the the uh, fork with bitcoin cash and bitcoin is this uh, this very thing they're talking about uh whereas we kind of get a picture into the mind of satoshi that he was looking for a solution uh for micropayments you know uh with bitcoin which you know it makes my mindset go to that he really wanted to 
<clears throat> Bitcoin to be this money, this digital money that had a use in this way. Um, you know that uh, he wasn't concerned about the the increase in the blocks in the size of the blocks. So uh, the Bitcoin core team, as they limit the size of the blocks, uh, and we you know got this increase in the fees. Uh, this is what uh, spurred along Bitcoin Cash to um, uh, come into play. And whereas it would be more usable like a money in the micro payments and a variety of things. I, you know, from, from what I'm seeing is quite important about this whole idea is it kind of gives us a picture into Satoshi's mind about what he wanted Bitcoin to be. Uh, he tried to predict the future with what might happen as he spoke about um, that uh, he thought band would, bandwidth in the next four or five years would be trivial. You know, he thought that our technology would advance uh, faster than it did. And uh, this is something that uh, uh, when you're a futurist or when you try to predict the future, sometimes the future works that way. Uh, you know, like I remember when I was a kid, I thought everybody would be zooming around and flying cars by now. So we don't have the flying cars, <laughs> you know, uh, but we have other things, right? And other ideas. And so Satoshi couldn't see the future, but I just think it's quite interesting that he uh, thought this way about Bitcoin. And it kind of gives us a picture of what Bitcoin was really meant to be. Uh, unfortunately, Satoshi was unable to see uh, what would happen with ASIC mining as well, and that ASIC mining would become this more um, uh, uh, decentralized, for lack of a better word, situation where people couldn't mine Bitcoin, and uh, where that these large data centers that uh, exist now, uh, he didn't see that on the radar because it was no ASIC mining at that time. So the future went in different directions. It got better in some ways and maybe outside his plan in other ways. But what is um, seeming to be true from what this um, this uh, content creator is saying, this person here, he's saying that uh, uh, Bitcoin Cash is seemingly more on par with Satoshi's uh, idea about what Bitcoin was supposed to be about this limit out of the way is the version of Bitcoin that best reflects what Satoshi Nakamoto actually had in mind. What do you think? Post your thoughts below the video. I'm Kronos. Thanks for watching. So that's all very interesting uh, and it gives us something to think about, doesn't it? You know, I, I think at the end of the day, we have to ask the question, is Bitcoin um, what we want it to be or is it definitive and what it should be? You know, it's kind of like what if I went in and I took the Constitution of the United States or your uh, perspective or laws of the land, whatever they might be, and just went on, went in and say, okay, let's just change this to say this, and we'll go this method with it at this time, right? Uh, then a lot of people in your country would probably have a big problem or issue with that. Uh, and uh, when you're looking at the Bitcoin white paper and you're getting away from that, uh, when something like micro payments are impractical, uh, they're too costly, the fees are too high, that this isn't going to work quite well uh, as a, a digital payment system or money uh, because the reality is uh, a, a lot of transaction, uh, transactions we need to do and that we will be doing if we were going to use blockchain technology in this way would, would consist of many micro payments. And so you wouldn't be using Bitcoin, you would be using something else. Now, uh, of course, you, uh, the story is we hear a lot of people saying, well, you know, now we got Lightning Network or something like that. But when Lightning Network is implemented into Bitcoin, I think it's a fair assumption to make that the Lightning Network kind of pulls away from the core ideas of Bitcoin itself and what Bitcoin was. Uh, now, I, I think at the very end, I think what a lot of us might have an issue with and I have a slight problem with uh, from this content creator is he then goes, OK, so this was the problem. So um, then Bitcoin Cash does it better. So maybe it's Bitcoin Cash. And I, I do like Bitcoin Cash, but I don't think Bitcoin Cash is Bitcoin. Right. Uh, there's many reasons why that probably wouldn't work well as being Bitcoin. Um, it, it, several reasons is um, I, I personally don't like the idea of 
uh, people who have invested in Bitcoin and the concept of Bitcoin, the idea of Bitcoin. Uh, and then um, uh, you, uh, a, a version of Bitcoin pops up. We call them altcoins. And the, all the money and all the value and, and network and the money that's went into the original infrastructure of that system, although it may no longer be true to the ideas of that first system, that means the people who have invested in that, their value has, they've lost their value because now they have to go into another coin. Because Bitcoin Cash, although it might be closer to the idea of the original Bitcoin, I can agree with that, over Bitcoin Core, it is still not the original Bitcoin, right? It is a new coin that acts more closer to what the future of the original Bitcoin may have been or may may have could have been or could have been, right? So there's where is is some problems now where i think it would work well if there was a way you didn't have to lose your value and you could still move that value along blockchains and uh, that's what we do in our project bitcoinnyk.com but that's a that's for another day um but uh it is something to think about and i'd like to hear you all's thoughts on that and um you know and and when you respond to this please i i you know I, I, I love for you guys to give this question some thought because I know a lot of people don't like Bitcoin Cash and things like that. And and and, and the uh, knee-jerk response is uh, Bitcoin, it's Bitcoin, this is not Bitcoin. The original Bitcoin is the original Bitcoin. Well, I, I disagree with that. I don't think the original Bitcoin is the original bit. I don't think this Bitcoin today is the original Bitcoin because I don't think it really shares the, the, the main properties of Bitcoin. Uh, in that way, but I will agree Bitcoin Cash is not that either. Um, but I like, I like you all to you know give that question some thought about uh, how far can this get away from Satoshi's idea before something else? Uh, and uh, does this uh, content creator here, uh, does he make valid points? Because I think he certainly does. Uh, but I, I like to hear you guys' uh, thoughts and opinions about it. Uh, so I'd like to move on to the next um, uh, segment, and on this one, we're going to talk about uh, a um, uh, a um, a um, CNBC uh, program that aired, uh, where Jimmy Sun talked a little bit about the differences between uh, blockchain and Bitcoin. Pretty big way. Do you not see any utility in? blockchain for enterprise I, I i don't see any use uh by enterprises they just sort of see the buzzword and you know imagine a world where you can xyz and they get sold on that vision without knowing any of the technical underpinnings and uh you know essentially what they're selling them is a square circle it's like it doesn't make any sense say you create something that's uh you know semi-decentralized using blockchain technology or whatever I will be able to do that faster, cheaper, easier, more conveniently, be able to iterate more often with a centralized service that does the same thing. Healthcare is a good example of what he's talking about here. Putting medical records on the blockchain could increase security and patient control, but decentralizing everything is tedious and expensive. It'd be a lot cheaper and easier to just update hospital IT systems. It's rather unfortunate that you know, people are so hyped on this technology. What can we do with blockchain? What can we do with blockchain? What can we apply this to? Oops, meant to pause that there. But as you can see, we were getting into Jimmy Song, who's a programmer, a Bitcoin maximalist. And in a very alarming way, he talks about, and I'm kind of actually surprised a little bit, uh, because he talks about uh, the blockchain having really no use in applications <laughs> to enterprises at all. And that if you try to use Bitcoin for something other than uh, money, uh, that uh, it, would, it, it would be inefficient. So he's saying that the argument for blockchain technology um, is, is not a very good one. And that the only uses of blockchain technology is in money in Bitcoin. Now, the only problem with this, the only issue is this. If we go back to the prior video, right? If the only use for blockchain technology is using Bitcoin as money, uh, based on how Bitcoin works today with the um, 
high transactional fees, if you try to make micro payments and not being efficient in that way, um, then it would be a, it wouldn't even be a really good money, would it? And, and, and so that's what's led many to believe or move over, right, to the idea that uh, Bitcoin works better as a store of value, this commodity, right, this, this goal, if you will. Um, and we're going to talk about some of the problems with that a little bit later, uh, some of the comparisons to gold in, in, the, in, the, in the Bitcoin market. But um, let's finish up on what Jimmy's saying uh, about the situation with Bitcoin here. And oops. Sorry about that, guys. How do we solve it? That's the right way to, you know, actually do innovation. You know, what what's hurting? How do I solve it? I, I'd hate to be that guy, but I'm the one saying Vampire has no clothes, right? Like it's it's a it's a technology stack that works for Bitcoin because it was designed that way. For everything else, it doesn't make any sense. All right, so Jimmy is obviously out on blockchain for business, but a lot of companies seem to disagree, like technology giant IBM. I thought it'd be pretty valuable to see what a major enterprise has to say about the prospect. And it turns out IBM has an entire blockchain division. Okay, I was trying to find that part where Jimmy talks about um, uh, Bitcoin only being good for money, but you kind of got some of, of that idea of what he was saying, and I'll leave a link in the description for this entire um uh broadcast but uh excuse me but he says that uh, uh uh bitcoin is only designed to work as a money right because you, you clearly heard him say that blockchain technology doesn't work for business or enterprises right and if they try to use it how inefficient it would be now i have to kind of agree uh a great deal with jimmy on this because I, i've i've had conversations with several developers where we tried to brainstorm uses for blockchain technology. And I can tell you that many times we've come up empty. And so we've, we've also come up with them finally, with many finally just admitting that uh, blockchain doesn't work for m many things. They were they were sound exactly like Jimmy Jimmy's song and they weren't Bitcoin maximalists, but they were saying the same thing he was saying. Uh, and we've tried several applications with blockchain technology it, it and it didn't um it, it didn't work well it wasn't efficient but in saying that i want to just uh, say two things and i want to point out two things the first thing is then if jimmy song is saying that bitcoin works better as a money uh you know does he is he accounting for microtransactions as well because we know bitcoin does not work good in that department so I, i'm under the assumption that he would mean more or less like a hard money like gold or something like that, uh, so that's the only thing I can I can think of uh, with that. But I but I think there will be a, a lot left to be desired in that again because uh, what we'll get with that is normal people who would be uh, using Bitcoin uh, would want to do transactions with it on a daily basis. Now, uh, if it's going to be treated something like gold, where the average person who's conducting business and moving money, uh, he's not storing his money in gold for the most part the top asset for him is the uh the the u.s dollar or the um, or the uh or the, or the euro right that that's what we trade the most uh and so for most people that's where a lot of their, their assets are uh it's not in gold and, and many of these things like that so i i don't really um uh, and again, you imagine them trying to move their money out of Bitcoin and paying those very high transactional fees. So at the at the at the very least, it would be used as a, a way to protect your money or shelter, not an efficient use of money. And I think this is is very uh, important. And going back and focusing on what Satoshi was saying in those early papers, I, I think it comes across abundantly clear that he was interested in Bitcoin being used for micro payments. And we know that's pretty much out of question the way that the structure of Bitcoin exists today. So I think that's something we need to really think long and hard about before we make a, a knee-jerk reaction and say something like, oh, well, this is Bitcoin and Bitcoin's the only 
uh, uh, you know, uh, true uh, thing in cryptocurrency that we need to be involved in. But the reality is if people don't feel that they can use it effectively and efficiently, uh, the growth of Bitcoin, I think, will, will be hindered a great, a great deal. So now I want to uh, move into the last segment, and that's going to kind of go into um, the idea of an um, uh, article I came across that talks about how Facebook coin is going to annihilate Ripple. Uh, it's going to annihilate Ripple, um, and uh, um, you know, I would, I would, I would be uh, maybe even adding Bitcoin to that. Uh, it, you know, possibly uh, if things keep going the way they're going. Uh, but uh, uh, this, of course, comes from um, I think it was the Bank of Siam, uh, one of Ripple's la um, one of its last business uh, deals or banks that was trying to add to uh, the uh, X Rapid system uh, that didn't go, that didn't work well. And and then we have to uh, basically. Uh, think about what does this mean for the future of something like R Ripple XRP, like um, in the unbanked department, if you, if you look at something like Facebook, uh, if people are using something like the Facebook global coin and they uh, can effectively now use, you know, integrate into their, their, their Facebook accounts, move this uh, cryptocurrency around, wouldn't that technically make them banked now? Uh, would they need a, Would they need many of these other services that are vying to be, uh, you know, uh, banking services for them? Another thing we have to, you know, keep in mind too is that the average person doesn't think of banking and money in the sense that we think of it uh, in the cryptocurrency space. So a lot of people. When they come in, they aren't looking at, uh, well, how many nodes are being run or how centralized is this? Uh, they just can't trust the banking systems that they are that are in their countries and the economic structure. And they're probably more interested in having uh, a, a used to uh, access to bank accounts through a network like probably what will exist with Facebook Global Coin, more so than how many nodes are being run in a variety of things like that. So I think the the, the point is that this can definitely hurt banking, uh, the uh, uh, these uh, entities that are going out after the unbank, um, you know, but with Facebook Coin, it's, I think it's going to also, uh, as a payment system, hinder a lot of the effects of, uh, what's going to happen with a, a lot of these cryptocurrencies and, and possibly even uh, Bitcoin. Uh, another interesting uh, report I want to close out with is, uh, and I don't have it in front of me, I'll try to leave a link in the description, but it had to do with a lot of the uh, reports that was done by Bitwise that I'm pretty sure was sent off to the SEC. Uh, and it talks about the uh, watch trading and the manipulation of the price and the value of Bitcoin. Uh, and it talks about it in a way where it shows uh, it, it, it's, the statistics are quite alarming. Uh, gold, uh, when compared to gold, gold, which has a market of uh, about seven, eight trillion dollars now, it's about 20 times uh, high, higher than the value of Bitcoin, I believe, at this point in time. Um, it, uh, uh, at the same time, um, it trades only three, this daily trade volume is only three times less than that of gold. So, it, it, it comparing this, <laughs> uh, it comparing this, uh, it, it's kind of weird because uh, you can see that there's, there's some huge issues in the market cap of Bitcoin and its daily trade volume compared to that of gold, but not, not only just compared to that of gold, uh, compared to uh, companies like Apple, uh, where the daily volume, daily trade volume of uh, uh, Bitcoin is almost uh, uh, over over half that of Apple's per day. I'll have to look at those stats again. But the uh, relationships between the trading of uh, Apple and the price of gold. When you couple that with the with the market cap of Bitcoin, it is just it just shows that uh, the prices of Bitcoin are definitely inaccurate. 
Um, and so, uh, you know, in a lot of my past videos, I've already thrown out the, the real price of Bitcoin, what I believe to be around $800. Um, but I'm going to try to produce that report and leave a link in the description that Bitwise did and sent out to the SEC. And the way they was able to figure out a lot of wash trading and inaccurate prices of Bitcoin uh, coming from the exchanges was quite easily uh, when they, a lot of the exchanges that got broke down meant that every member of that exchange in some cases would have to be doing like uh, trading vo trade volume about $20,000 a day each. And so it just started to hit ridiculous levels. Uh, for those numbers to be real, because it would mean that, uh, you know, every account, some of these exchanges didn't have that many members. So you're wondering, well, where's all this trade volume coming from? And so that was one way they were able to kind of close it down. But it's all very interesting. And I think it does uh, make us really have to take a step back and, and think about, uh, you know, what we should be looking at in cryptocurrency and what's going to have the stand power. And uh, what's going to really last and, 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 and you know, it be something uh, uh, effective and, and useful to people. Uh, I invite you all to look at our project, BitcoinNYK.com, that we think addresses a lot of the problems in cryptocurrency. Um, and uh, we, we think you definitely need to take a look at it uh, and add that to part of your crypto education uh, on our quest to try to find out. Uh, exactly, uh, uh, you know, or learn as much as we can about this space so that we're always a step ahead of uh, the uncertain uh, and the unforeseen occurrences that uh, often come our way in cryptocurrency. <laughs> but that's all I want to say in this video. Uh, if you like content like this, don't forget to like, subscribe, and until next time, take care.